There are targets lined up next to each other. In front of a yellow structure with a brown roof, young people are engaging in archery practice. They all appear intent on completing their tasks, almost as if they revere the bow and the activity itself. When the teacher claims that the state of their equipment reflects who they are, there is a sense of serenity and stoicism in the room. Teenage pupils from every class bow to him and express gratitude for the lesson. Mr. Tsugurama, the coach, talks with one of the students when Kishimoto, a young, apparently focused, and shy young girl, walks toward the training field. She will stay behind to practice, they say. Kishimoto lifted her chin and, with determination, said it was her last tournament so she didn't want to have any regrets. The two smile and say that they will see her tomorrow. Everyone is gone and Kishimoto remains alone in the training field. She looks to the target, so far away and so aligned, with determination in her eyes. With serenity, she bows and says to herself that everything will be okay. Kishimoto stands, feet placed in correct form, and holds the bow reverently. A boy watches her from the other side of the glass as she prepares to fire. The moment the arrow is released, Kishimoto grimaces in pain and puts her hands on her wrist, which makes the boy watching her do the same. There is a bruise on Kishimoto's wrist and Mikami, the man watching her, says her name with longing. His eyes move to the poster where it says Inter High Championship. He looks back at Kishimoto and promises they'll get there together. The day of the archery competition has arrived. The girls bow in respect to the targets and Kishimoto is the face of determination while she walks toward the target. The audience waits in anticipation as the girls prepare to shoot and, when Kishimoto does, her expression falters for a few seconds as she looks straight ahead, trying to compose herself. It's only when the round ends that she the competition ends and she hides in the hall while crying. One of Mr. Tsugurama's assistants approaches her slowly and sits next to the woman, obviously attempting to comfort her. Even before he can begin, Kishimoto stops him. She apologizes repeatedly, mostly because she was the team leader and lost, but he says that was irrelevant because she tried her best. The girl is not persuaded despite her trainer's comforting voice and cries out inconsolably once more. Her demeanor and attitude convey the frailty of someone about to give up. The applause that reverberates throughout the auditorium interrupts the moment. After exchanging glances, Kishimoto and his trainer moved to investigate. The attention of everyone seemed to be on Mikami, a second-year student, and the flawless shot he had just made. Unsurprising is the news that follows that Mikami Yoda won the men's competition. Her trainer assistant is perplexed. Mikami missed all of his practices, so the boy's ability to triumph surprised the man, he claims. Mikami peers at Kishimoto, who is surrounded by a lot of people and he returns her gaze. The day passes and Kishimoto is leaving school. She looks in her bag for something, but she doesn't find it and has to go to the classroom to look for it. The girl is very distracted in her task when Mikami surprises her, going in there and asking her if what the girl was looking for was what he had in his hands. Kishimoto's eyes widened, surprised, and, thanking him, he reached out to take the object from Mikami's hand. But the boy had other plans. He takes her wrist, unbuttons her sleeves, and examines the laceration, wondering if it was caused by the bowstring. Kishimoto hesitates before confirming. Mikami then turns away from her. Intriguingly, the child inquires as to why she enjoyed archery so much and if she could teach him to enjoy it as well. The girl looks perplexed when she hears the statement. How could you teach archery to a man who had just won a tournament? She makes her point, gets up, and runs away, while Mikami stares at her longingly. Kishimoto argues with someone in the staff office, claiming that she should cease training because she needs to study for her college entrance exam, and that Mikami should be captain. After succeeding in her will, she rushes to the shooting training facility, where she discovers Mikami is already in training. She is envious of the boy's talent, but her thoughts are disrupted when Mikami notices her and, startled, identifies Kishimoto's presence. She tells him that she doesn't want to be a bother, as seeing him exercise was unusual, and threatens to leave when Mikami calls her name. He inquires as to why she increased the weight of the bow if it harmed her and caused her to lose the competition. He claims she could have asked for assistance and that withdrawing from a competition like that before the fall tournament was irresponsible. Kishimoto, who is slightly offended by the boy's tone, says that she doesn't need to hear anything from him because he has no idea what she is going through. Mikami claims he doesn't care. Wouldn't she have lamented quitting archery in that manner? Reflection is enough to make her train. Kishimoto handles the bow while Mikami's attentive eyes watch her. He touches her to adjust her posture and she fidgets. The girl asks him to stop staring at her, but he claims that his eyes were attracted and he found her sexy. Kishimoto almost jumps at the boy's boldness, but he smiles and says he was joking, which makes her smile too. The mood returns to archery and, under Mikami's instructions, Kishimoto shoots right on target. Mikami smiles and says she does a good job and they would try again. At night, while studying, Kishimoto looks at Mikami's picture, intrigued. The day goes by and Kishimoto and his friends are talking about college when one of his old teammates asks if she was going to train. 
The girl explains that she had quit the team, but the boy isn't convinced. He says that her name was on the tournament lineup Mikami had placed. The girl widens her eyes and runs to the training center, waking up the boy who was lying down. She asks why he had put her name on the lineup since she had exams to prepare for. Mikami insists that she participate. She says that she cannot decide for him, but the boy, looking at her intensely, says that he is desperate to make her stay because he dominates her thoughts. Without warning, he pulls her into a kiss and lays them down on the floor, asking if she understood that he was in love with her. He begs them to train. Kishimoto looks lost, but something in his eyes attracts her and she agrees to finish the training. It's too soon to be falling for you Cause I've heard of things like this before But didn't know the dreams still came true Who gets to say we're not right That it won't work you and I Cause as long as it's worth fighting for in our eyes We should be fine Kishimoto's friends don't like the idea of her going back to training, as they thought she should study so they can get into college together. She says she understands, but stays quiet when they ask why she wants to continue training. After class, the girl is walking alone, when she sees Mikami in an open space, crying. She doesn't approach him, but feels sorry for him. A little bit later, Mikami asks her to go train early and the boy gives the girl some posture tips, making her shot come out perfect, without hurting her arm. Kishimoto is happy and, later, it makes Kishimoto's friends realize that something is going on between the two. At the training with the team, Mikami's phone rings and the girl watches him as he asks, what's wrong? Something urgent had just come up and she realized that the two of them couldn't train afterward. Curious, Kishimoto asks who was on the phone, but he doesn't answer. Mikami is in training again with Kishimoto when he calls her name and she ignores it, causing him to go after her and grab her hand and tell her that she has been avoiding him all day. Kishimoto says that she was right to be mad. The boy says she wasn't, that he was happy to have prevented him from giving up. The girl is taken by surprise. Was that why he had said he loved her and kissed her? Was everything a lie then? Mikami doesn't like the conjectures, because he assumes a serene tone and tells her that she had no right to invalidate his feelings for her, which makes Kishimoto lower his head in embarrassment. Mikami storms out and she has to lean against the wall, trying to figure out this boy. Another phase of the tournament starts and Mikami's shot is perfect. Two scouts look at him but say he was good but lacked passion. One of them is Kiwabara. Meanwhile, Kishimoto continues training, but the bowstring hurts her. She is trying to ice her wrist when Mikami comes downstairs. The two start to argue and Kishimoto admits that she doesn't have the confidence to be in the lineup, that he put her there without her wanting. To Kishimoto's surprise, Mikami apologizes, saying that he took advantage of her good nature to fulfill his desire to win with her. He asks her to believe in herself. Kishimoto reflects and goes to the competition, where he achieves formidable results and draws the attention of Kiwabara from university. He congratulates her on the winning team and says he was impressed with her. Kishimoto bows, full of happiness. Afterwards, she asks her friends where Mikami is and one of them says that he was on the phone with a certain Yuki, who must be his girlfriend. The girl does not even think but runs to meet him. She succeeds and follows him to a hospital, where she sneaks onto gurneys and tries to see who Mikami was talking to. The person soon sees the girl, who tries to hide without success. Mikami sees her and she tries to explain what she was doing there. Mikami's friend asks if she was the girl who liked archery and explains that he and Mikami were childhood friends, Naoki. Understanding covers the girl's features. Naoki was Yuki. Mikami hurries over and says that she was getting late and that he would take her home. He walks hurriedly and half angrily and she tries to get his attention, after leaving the hospital, bringing the two face to face. She thanks him for the day. She was happy that she had participated in the tournament and could now leave the team with no regrets. She confesses that she thought Yuki was a woman and that's why she followed him. Mikami is excited by her jealousy and asks why. Shyly, the girl admits that she liked him. Mikami looks at her in disbelief. She had no idea how happy he was. The two stare at each other expectantly, full of unspoken words. He asks her to be his girlfriend and she accepts. The two go to Mikami's house. Kishimoto sits in the living room and he serves her tea and sits down next to her. She, fascinated, looks at Mikami's bookshelf, telling her that he had a happy family. Mikami admits that the people in the photo were his uncles, as his parents moved to Germany when he was a baby and don't care much for him. He hugs her from behind and admits that he didn't tell her about Yuki because he didn't want her to fall in love with him. Kishimoto looks offended and touched because he says there's no one for her. She won't fall in love with anyone anymore. The two start walking together, hand in hand. Mikami asks for a kiss, but she says she's not ready and runs away. 
The other day, students are watching Kiwabara training on the university team and they say he is beautiful. Kiwabara offers training to Kishimoto, who readily accepts. He asks if Mikami was her boyfriend and the girl firmly replies yes. The two don't say anything else and go back to archery training. At lunch, Kishimoto tells Mikami everything, who doesn't like how she was speaking well of Kiwabara and is rude to her. Kishimoto's friends at school ask if she was prepared for an interview. They make it clear that the girl was pretty distracted and that love shouldn't put anyone down. Kishimoto is called by a desperate boy, asking to follow him and obeys. She and her friends go to a staircase, where she has a view of a room through a window. Mikami was inside that room with Murakami, the second-year goddess. She flirts with Mikami, but he turns her down, saying he only had eyes for one. A smile appears on Kishimoto's lips when her friends tease her about the boy's attitude. Later, Kishimoto decides to surprise Mikami. She asks if he's going to archery classes and he says yes but is cold, apparently still mad at her. He goes to open the door, but she calls him and quickly kisses his cheek. She moves away a little, rubs her hands, and, shyly, says that she was ready to kiss him. He pins her against the wall, says it's unnerving that he loves her more than she loves him, but kisses her hungrily. He says he wants everything with her and opens the door before she responds. They are lying kissing as he kisses her neck when he stops and says he was forcing himself, and if she's scared, she can say. Kishimoto says she loves him entirely and then her hands run over his face, while she says she's okay with the position they are in. Mikami looks to the side, but her phone rings, which makes him get off Kishimoto. On the identifier, her father's name appears, but he ignores it and tells Mikami someone called the wrong number. The two leave the apartment and walk hand in hand. Mikami says that the college exams were on the same day as his tournament and gives her a lucky charm. Kishimoto looks at it, and her face shines. She thanks him with a smile, enchanted by him. Mikami later goes to visit Yuki and they end up talking about Kishimoto, about how serious he is about her. The two are on a lawn, probably in the hospital, and Yuki manipulates the bow under his friend's watchful eye. Yuki tries to bring up the subject of Mikami's future, but the boy doesn't encourage it, making it clear that he is unwilling to discuss it. The scene changes to Mikami walking alone at night and a man calls out to him. The boy's eyes harden when he realizes the owner of the voice. His father is all smiles, saying he had to go there because Mikami doesn't answer his calls. But the boy doesn't give any room for friendliness, asking what he was doing there. His father assumes a firm stance, the smile disappears from his mouth when he says that Mikami should stay with him. Which makes the boy say that he would not go to Germany, and that he could get a scholarship for archery. His father laughs ironically and says that Mikami only shot because of Yuki, who would soon die, as his illness was terminal. Mikami gets angry and tells his father that he had to stop ruling his life, but his father is not shaken and retorts that Mikami was just like him. The boy swallowed his anger, turned, and walked away, not caring about his father asking where he was going. Lying on the bed, Kishimoto runs her eyes over her contacts, distressed. In the morning, instead of studying, she can't stop staring at the lucky charm Mikami gave her. This is bad. She needed to focus. She tries again to read and pay attention. Her exams would not be done by herself. The test day arrived. Kishimoto apparently does the test easily. Meanwhile, Mikami walks over to where the tournament is to be held, looking conflicted. In an act of rebellion, he sends a message to Endo, one of the boys on the team, saying that he would not go. It's time for the admission interview. Kishimoto is asked what she gained from her time in high school. She talks about how archery is important to her and how it has helped her support her teammates. The interviewers nod in satisfaction and she is released. As soon as she leaves the building, upon picking up her cell phone, Kishimoto stops walking when he sees Endo's missed calls and messages. She calls him back and her face contorts with apprehension when he tells her that Mikami didn't go to the tournament. She rushes off to the hospital, but Mikami isn't there. Yuki says he wasn't home. Where could he be? Kishimoto lights up as she remembers when she found him alone crying. She goes to the place and Mikami is there, standing, looking at the landscape. Kishimoto starts to say how Mikami has everyone worried when he apologizes and tries to explain himself. The father had returned, and everything was complicated. Kishimoto tries to get him to talk more, but he won't budge, so she asks about the place. She says that she had already seen him there and asks what it means. Mikami also doesn't want to talk and Kishimoto gets stressed. She tells him to not shut her out. She tells him to say something. She wants to be there when he's hurting. She misses him. Mikami looks down, still unable to form words. Kishimoto notices some bandages on his wrist and asks what it was, if he had hurt himself with the bowstrings. Mikami dismisses her comments, saying it's nothing. Mikami looks at her and asks what she thinks when she shoots. Kishimoto sees this as a cry for help and soon positions himself in front of him, while he has the bows in his hands. She simulates, speaking instructions and moving according to her way of shooting. 
Mikami mirrors her movements, the two are one. When they finish, silence settles. She turns to him. Mikami is better, he even gives her thanks. However, the sadness does not leave his eyes and the girl notices. She approaches, says she loves him, and kisses him. Mikami's expression is pained and his voice is anguished when he says that he was forcing his love on Kishimoto. That he had to break up with her. Kishimoto looks at him, tears in her eyes. What? Did he want to break up? Why? Mikami doesn't respond to any of these answers, he just leaves her alone, crying. There's a song in my heart, there's a fire in my head Small, cannot the truth There's a ghost in the room, a river running through Dividing up the night, oh mysterious way We give and we take, holding it back In your eyes, I remember you this way. Starry night, come alive. Everything, make it bright. Illuminate across the sky, just for us tonight. It's Kishimoto's graduation day. She contemplates the training field, walking around, still with a bow. She is then taken aback by Mikami calling out to her. She turns back and calls out to him, but has no response. Kishimoto made it through college and is on their archery team. She introduces herself and says that she loves archery with all her heart and is quite happy, except that she spends training alone and even eats lunch alone. Kiyobara finds her eating and shows her a video of Mikami shooting the tournament. The two watch in amazement as the boy copies Kishimoto's form when shooting. Lost, sad, and confused, Kishimoto goes to the training ground, with Kiyobara, and confronts Mikami, asking why he was copying her form. Somehow Kishimoto was hopeful that the act would mean that he still loved her. Mikami says she has the wrong idea and he just wants her to leave him alone. Kishimoto doesn't give up. She says louder she needs to know, but Kiyobara tells her to let it go. Kishimoto isn't the only one angry, Kiyobara acidly says that if Mikami didn't love the girl, he wouldn't care what he would do now. Before either of them can react, Kiyobara kisses Kishimoto. There is a shocked silence, soon broken by Mikami as he steps forward, grabs Kiyobara's shoulders, and punches him. Kiyobara is unfazed. He says that Mikami's love for her is too heavy. He hadn't been properly loved, did he? Mikami drops his shoulder, hurt, and tells him to apologize to Kishimoto. Kishimoto takes courage and retorts that they weren't together, that he had no reason to be affected. Mikami says she was right, her voice full of scorn, apologizes, and walks away from Kiwabara. It's not the answer Kishimoto wants to hear. She abandons the two at the training facility, leaving Kiwabara irate with Mikami. He asks if Mikami would let her go and says that he had hurt Kishimoto with her with his twisted idea of love. Meanwhile, Kishimoto is on the roof of the school, deeply hurt. The girl decides to see Yuki, who says that Mikami copying her form was a confession of love. Mikami says that Mikami had never been surrounded by love and therefore didn't know how to express it. Kishimoto makes a decision. She goes to the tournament venue and meets up with Mikami. The boy says he was scared. That he would know, today, if his effort had been worth it. In a fragile gesture, Mikami asks Kishimoto to hold her hand, which makes her hesitate. Mikami begs. Kishimoto looks at him and then looks at the hand held out in front of her. In an act of courage, she picks it up. Kishimoto tells Mikami that whenever he took the bow, he told himself that everything would be fine. He thanks her for her words and asks her to wish him luck. Kishimoto just smiles and watches Mikami leave towards the competition venue. Kishimoto then goes to where she had found Mikami when he was gone, deciding not to stay there to see the boy. The men's final was about to begin. Mikami positions himself and, in the special place where she found Mikami when he wanted to give up. Kishimoto remembers Yuki saying that Mikami was using her form and it was a way for her to be with him in the tournament. Kishimoto looks at the landscape. She says I'm there with you. Everything will be okay after the first bow. The uneasiness and doubt will go away. Mikami is in the tournament, mimicking Kishimoto's form while Kishimoto herself is doing the same, in the place where she is. You're not alone. The two, both in their respective places, make the movements of lowering the bow and pulling the string. We're doing this. As one, he lets go of the rope. His arm bleeds and Kishimoto looks down at his own wound. She then repeats all the information, always mirroring Mikami's movements in the tournament. The two are one. Her movement is his movement. Her breath is his breath. Mikami fires again. The shot is good. With applause, he is announced as the newest archery winner. Mikami arrives at the training ground and finds Kishimoto. He calls out to her and she turns around. 
Kishimoto congratulates him but tells him he's a fool for insisting on using her form when it's hurting his arm. Mikami steps forward, his eyes on the horizon. He says that if it wasn't for her, he would never have made it this far. He didn't have any interest in archery, he was just doing it for Yuki, but he got jealous watching her practice. She wasn't a natural rocker, but she trained harder than anyone else. She was honest. She had a passion for archery. He had fallen in love with her and that was why he wanted to win using her form. Mikami also regretfully says he was controlling and staying with her would add to the fact. Kishimoto finds the voice, asking what Mikami wanted from her. He says he wants it all. Not just her body and soul, but every moment of her life. Kishimoto has tears running down his face. She says that all that was already his, that she always wants to be with him, and that she would prove that she loved him. The two will shoot. The first one to shoot wrong wins. If Mikami wins, she should stay away from him. Mikami's shot is very good. There is a bit of hesitation in Kishimoto, but she goes for it. The arrow doesn't go very well. Mikami's second shot lands almost in the center. Kishimoto shoots again and says she won't lose him. After several attempts, when it was getting dark, Kishimoto says that he will always be Mikami's. The phrase is enough to break his concentration and make him miss the mark completely. Kishimoto then takes a deep breath. She takes aim, and she shoots right in the center. The two stare at the shock target, leave their position and look at each other. Mikami smiles and says it was an excellent shot. Kishimoto smiles too and says he should love her more because how much he loved wasn't enough, she wanted more. Mikami says he would try and she smiles. The two of them bow. And so they kiss. 